So hello everybody and welcome. This is Turning Towards Life, which is uh, a long running podcast conversation from Third Space and we are Justin and Lizzie from Third Space and so glad to have you with us today. Whether you're live with us at 9am UK time in our Facebook group or listening to us on a podcast or you found us on our Turning Towards Life website or you've come to us through one of our many third space programs who knows how you got to us but we're very glad that you're here and um as always lizzie i'm very very happy to be in this conversation and in this practice with you and uh, grateful to you for showing up every week without fail no matter what and um for bringing us this amazing source that we're going to begin with this morning Hmm. Well, I want to begin by thanking the wonderful Kerry, who may be listening to this, and to say thank you for this source, because Justin, we got brought this in something we were in together this week, and it moved me so much to hear it, and so I asked her to send it to me, and I feel like our sources come from so many different places, they obviously come from the ways we're connected. And yes, we might turn around and they might be on our bookshelves or something, but so many times they are born from the conversations I'm in or the people sending me something or me seeing what someone else has written or whatever. So I feel really grateful for that kind of the network of lines that connect us all. And I feel very much in receipt of that. And this is a, this is one of those things. And Kerry is a person who truly believes in this opening up of possibility through artistry and you'll know Justin how beautifully she guided us through a creative process this week and how sacred this is to her so this conversation is dedicated to her and also the fact that it was written so long ago and how of course artistry is one of those time irrelevant somethings that really really matters so I love that it was written so long ago it's not like a modern thought or something I mean in relation to the whole of history yes it is but you know today um, the meaning of art and the word artist can be spoken about in the same way and it feels really important to attend to the thread that is that has always been there of of this creativity and so here we go. This is from a book called The Art Spirit by Robert Henry, written in 1923. <clears throat> and it's a, a short quote, and it goes like this. When the artist is alive in any person, whatever his work may be, he becomes an inventive, searching, daring, self-expressing creature. He disturbs, upsets, enlightens, and opens the way for a better understanding. Where those who are not artists are trying to close the book, he opens it, shows there are still more pages possible. Thanks, Lizzie. So as always, I'm gonna read it too. And I'll just say before I read it for anybody who's with us, you can always find these sources. We post them in the notes with the podcast, but they're also always on our lovely Turning Towards the Life website. When the artist is alive in any person, whatever his work may be, he becomes an inventive, searching, daring, self-expressing creature. He disturbs, upsets, enlightens, and opens the way for a better understanding where those who are not artists are trying to close the book, he opens it, shows that there are still more pages possible. Mm. Thanks, Justin. Oh, so what this little passage in this moment opens up for me 
is that I can find so many times when I feel like I'm at the end of the road with something. Like I've, I've, I've had all the ideas, I've done everything that could be done. There's nothing else I can do. And that feels like everything kind of narrows down to like very few options. And so many times some kind of artistry, often from other people, has come into my life where I've thought, oh my gosh, I didn't see it that way. I didn't understand it that way. And the world opens again. It happened yesterday in a conversation here where I am, where I thought, my goodness, I, I've never, I've never thought that. I'd never got there myself. I'd have felt the artistry of something opening up that hadn't been understood before, that opened understanding. And to think of us all that way, like that this is the nature of beings, that we are, we can make things, we, we can use language to open worlds, and that that's artistry feels really important to acknowledge because I also think art you could think it's just painting a picture or something of course that's one way but it's not the only way and that to dignify the artist with this piece of you know whatever his work may be it might be somebody who who creates conversations or talks to your friends or leads an organization or is in mothering or working in a whatever environment it feels like to consider ourselves artists in whatever we're doing not only feels life-giving for the system that we're in but it makes what we are up to an enjoyable something that meets us in our spirit in in our aliveness and it and it's a, a kind of it creates that kind of reciprocity of what I'm giving is enlivening me as well as enlivening people around us and so it feels really crucial to to talk about this kind of self-expression and having the capacity to feel our own art in whatever we're doing seems to me like something we can't we can't ignore as something that's vital to all of us. Love the um I just want to say something very briefly, Lizzie, about the, the language in this piece, because obviously it's written at a time when uh, there wasn't much emphasis on inclusive language. So in every point, I want to change all the pronouns into something else that would have us all feel more properly included. Um, and it begins with this amazing claim, when the artist is alive in any person, whatever their work may be, which is, um, seems to me what you're pointing to. And um, you, you had this list, wonderful sort of beginning list of places where art might get expressed and it includes so many, included so many different um, roles and identities we take up in our lives from leadership to motherhood to who knows what. And it seems really, really true to me that the artist is not, um, yes, there's an identity in the world called artist. There are people whose profession is artist or who dedicate themselves to a particular form of art like painting or sculpture or something like that. And that of course is art. And then there's the way that the artist of us can be alive in the midst of anything that we do. And I, I think that, so there's a claim being made here that to be an artist and to be a person are really not that different. They're not separate to one another, but to be a person is to have an artist mm -hmm. that could be alive in us at any time. Now it might, the artist in us might need support and welcome, it might benefit from practice. It might benefit from having um, help. It might benefit from having people who love us, who recognize the art that we're up to, all of those things. But that the artist is not separable from us, that to be a human is really to be one who makes art. And I, I really love um, 
Seth Godin talks about art as being any time we can say to one another with sincerity, here, I made this. Mm. I came up with this and I'm offering it. It's, it's here, I'm bringing it. That's art. And um, mm. the thing I was feeling most strongly when you were talking was, oh my goodness, the pain that the wider culture that so many of us have grown up in has taught us that art is separate from everything else. It's, preserve of the, it's the preserve of a few and it's basically not very valuable unless you happen to get very famous or something. Yeah. Uh, famous artists are valuable because I don't know, they make lots of money and they make a big name for themselves, but ordinary everyday art, like the kind that you and I might make by expressing ourselves on the page or inventing a new way of doing something or finding a new conversation to be in with someone else or writing an email or an Instagram post or something that, it, that, that does this, that reaches into our inventiveness and our way of seeing or, um, or, or helping a child go to sleep, <laughs> that they're all, they're all places where when we allow ourselves to connect up what's inside us with what's outside us, with mm. what's most fully here, we have a chance to make art. But we've been taught that that's not the case. And we've also been taught that it's much better to do something in a standard way than to do it in the way that I'm learning to do that comes from this one right here, right now. Mm. We see that in work, but we see it in all kinds of things, you know, rules, lists of rules about how to be a parent or how to be a, in a relationship or how to be a friend, as long as everybody can fit into these rules. And that cuts off our deep and very, very um, straightforwardly human capacity to respond creatively and boldly and sensitively and gently. And in, like you said, now I'm sort of getting what you said in any way. And in, an, in a way that's reciprocity with the world, that's in relationship with who and what's around us. Mm. Thank God, I'm feeling so moved by what if the world considered itself a collection of artists. Like I'm an artist and you're an artist. So whatever you come to me with, I treat like your art. And I know what it's like to produce art because I feel like I'm an artist myself. You know, if that could be our story, how tenderly I would welcome your contributions. Like if I remember any time I made something and I said to someone, I made something, it's such a beautiful, vulnerable place where something new is coming to life, something, a drawing got made or a thing got said or something got designed. And we could say, oh, this is creation. This is creativity. This is an offering you're making that's tender and new and vulnerable. If we could say that to one another, first and foremost, before anything else, what kind of world would be made? So it would mean that I could come to you with something and you wouldn't first and foremost, slash it to pieces and critique it or something. You would first welcome it. You would first say, my goodness, this is what I can see. This is what I appreciate. Thank you. And then what conversation might open up that creates this better understanding? But that that first move, which is probably only possible if I have been an artist myself, which is to feel the tenderness and the vulnerability of making something, like you said, how Seth puts it, here I've made something. We can genuinely say that. If we treated that with the kind of respect that it really requires, what kind of relationships would we all have and what kind of things could get born? And what kind of space would we open up for people to feel safe to create as well? So for people to feel like it's, it's okay to feel tender, it's okay to feel vulnerable, it's okay to put something into a space, into a relationship, into a room, and that they would be welcomed, that they would be seen that they would be thanked, whatever the thing was, and then see what conversation it opened up. If we had that kind of openness, the world would be quite something. And 
I don't really know whether we know how to do that at large. You know, I know places where that's really possible, but I also know quite um, sophisticated places where that's not possible at all. And it feels scary and like, who knows how people are going to treat my baby. I don't know what you're going to do, so maybe I won't bring it because I'm not sure what kind of welcome it's going to receive. And of course, when something is new, newly born, it's tender, it's not robust yet, it's not um, in in the way that Robert Henry speaks about it, it's, it's inventive, it's daring, it has self-expression in it, there's something at stake. You know, when we create something, when we make something, we're kind of putting our hearts out there in our hands, offering for our hearts to be potentially bashed around with the thing that we made like it becomes an extension of us. So self-expression is a really profoundly honourable thing to do. And I'm in this moment feeling so, um, so respectful of anyone in, in being who says, I've, I've made this look and, and another person would encounter it because it's so risky. And so if we could be people who honor the risk that's being taken and who gently and seriously and with open and light hearts say, thank you, whatever it is, thank you. And let's, let's begin the conversation about what this is or receive it fully. Our world would be really different. And, and I'm not just talking about a song that gets made. I'm talking about a document at work or a, a presentation or the way the dishwasher is loaded or <laughs> the dishwasher comes back through our conversation again, the way that the bed got made or, and I suppose I'm sensitive to this particularly because <clears throat> those things happen in quite higgledy piggledy way with a two year old around the, the kind of look what I made mummy. And it's like a piece of toilet roll wrapped in a piece of toilet roll, but she made it. She's coming to me saying I'm, and there's a present inside of it, but it's another piece of toilet roll kind of thing. I was like, oh my goodness, look what you made. Rather than, well, that's just a piece of toilet roll. But for, for, for her, that it's a, a creation. So I'm feeling really tender towards that part of us that brings things forward and that needs to find welcome in order for it to keep happening. What you said about... Um when something isn't robust yet. Because uh, it was kind of what's been coming up in me as you were talking is the tension between conforming, socially conforming or conforming to standards and creativity where we open, you know, we open the, instead of trying to close the book, we open it and we show that something is possible. And it's a proper, it's a, it's a genuine and right tension between the two. So we don't have ways of understanding one another and everyone's just doing their own art that nobody else can make any sense of. We have no place to meet. So there's a, there's a role for our finding common ground with one another, setting aside something in order to be able to speak and listen to one another, having a shared language, for example. I mean, I could make up a language now and it might be very artistic, but we'd have a hard time understanding one another. And the, there's a role of that particularly if we're making things if I want to make if I want to be artistic and make a new system by which we'll live our lives you know a creative way of managing money or the economy or work or building aircraft or something like that all of those standards really they really matter and then the other end of the of the this sort of polarity is where the unique something that's mine that comes through that could never be expressed by anyone else and I, I, so you're, and, and it seems to me that for many of us, we collapse into the conforming side of the polarity. We are either forced to by those, by the culture around us, or we, the parts of us that are ashamed hold us back or whatever it is. And we find ourselves um, limiting what we could bring or say, or joining in the, um, you were talking about presentations and documents at work, you know, joining in the, the culture that says that that documents have to be written on a word processor you know with power with bullet points or 
none of which is really true that's just convention it doesn't create more safety it doesn't make things more reliable it's just a it's just a convention which we could play with and toy with and all of that but also to recognize that when something new is brought it won't be robust yet and that some things really bear becoming robust if we want mm. them to last if we want them to be in between us and so I, I was touched by the possibility that we might start with welcome yeah not start with tearing something apart because it isn't robust yet and then what it also then takes for those of us who want to bring art is also if we want our art to last and mean something to anyone other than us it might just mean something to me in which case it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks of it but if I want to bring it into the social world and I want it to be shared, there's a, there is a process of um, first of welcome and then of refining something together and toying with something together and seeing what it can become together so that it can have the, if the, it can do what it intends in the world if it has an intention. Yeah. And it is a tender thing to do to not to close that down either side to close that down so if you bring something to me for me to stay open and welcoming but then for you not to close it down the moment I say well I wonder I wonder if what about this way of looking at it or that way and us en entering into the reciprocity that continues to make something that's more and more suited for the the lives that we want to lead and the people that we want to be it sort of becomes in the in-between yeah um, and that's, I'm just noticing that that's a, you know, maybe one of the things that stops us bringing art is, first of all, is how easy it is for other people to close us down very quickly and to go, well, that's not well thought through, is it? Well, that doesn't, that's odd. You just brought a document that was in colours that we don't use around here, or, you know, you mm. did it by hand or something. But then, then actually, we've got... Um, a kind of care that we can bring to our own art which is then to not close it down ourselves when other people having brought it when other people say here's what I can see mm. here's my contribution to this can we stay we have to all be artists in a way maybe that's what, the more we mm. stay all artists with the with the, the keeping on opening pages which also is going to involve closing pages sometimes to go yeah you know, that way of doing the dishwasher, Lizzie, Lizzie, it's very beautiful. The dishes don't get clean. So, you know, can we, can we, you know, can we, can we let ourselves <laughs> find out when our art, there's some way in the, which our art doesn't meet the world, yes, and could, and not be deterred and not deter yeah. one another when that happens. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What you're saying about first welcoming you know let's first welcome something feels really 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 important and also for me feels really important to discern when only welcome is necessary and when the other thing of let's talk about this is necessary because I'm not sure many times that anything other than welcome is necessary and it might be you know of course if it's for something technical or there's there's some better understanding that comes and then there's a lot of conversation to be had and whatever. But also a lot of the time, I think we discount things as not being creative when they are creative and they don't need all of that critique at all. They just need really, really welcoming, profoundly welcoming, which is like, you know, ordinary acts. And in a way, you know, Justin, we've been in this kind of threaded conversation of receiving there's something in receiving here for me, which is that if I were to wander around like I'm an artist and that you're an artist, for me, that's a, a narrative of receiving, which means when I encounter something, someone, a song, a flower, as an artist, I, I am dedicated to receiving that, not complaining about it first off or trying to fix it or critique it or something but to see what is created what's being created what's being offered first and being grateful and saying thank you and then who knows what maybe there's nothing maybe there's the thing you're talking about of let's make this uh, powerful in the world 
let's let's do this together so that it could be something that reaches the world as it's intended but so many times it can the point is to welcome and that's really it like there'd be way more times that just a welcome is necessary than when you know the backwards and forwards is necessary because there's way more happening that is artistry and that isn't producing anything but it's artistry and so I'm feeling very very invited into being a welcome for all of the small things that are offerings and which I could create an environment of welcome around me so that that practice keeps on happening of creating you know I'm particularly thinking in parenting now like and also in an organization if I become a person who really genuinely welcomes everything that comes no matter what it is as from humans as offerings of creation it changes my course of action afterwards so something comes to me that's a proposal if I see it first and foremost as a, a create a piece of creativity rather than a way to manipulate me or a way to control me or you know I change my orientation from what's this going to take from me to what, what's this giving me what's this showing me it feels like the world really shifts like the what 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 I would do my options my possibilities for action really change when I receive something as a piece of art and I I also feel very very tender towards those people who put themselves on the line and offer things me being one of them and I'm thinking of people who for example ask to have conversations that aren't normally had that might be difficult that somebody brings a different practice into a bunch of existing practices like singing on Christmas day or having a, a check-in in a meeting at work like somebody can feel the what what could bring more beauty and tries to bring it and so many times I've seen them get kind of shamed or shut down or like the the, the, the dominant culture just kind of goes no and I feel really sad about that I've seen it happen so many times and if everybody was welcoming like artists that kind of shutdown wouldn't happen and those offers would keep coming rather than oh I'm never doing that again so I'm feeling really um really respectful of the of those ones of us who are really showing that there's still more possibility than what is already here through our art and our offerings and feeling very respectful of the tenderness and the goodness and the um, the care that's in art that's in art mm. i find myself um wondering as you're speaking sort of torn between a couple of different things so one is the welcome one thing you're saying it seems to me is that there's an orientation to welcome to what comes that we can take up and that that is that that fosters the artist in each of us when we're prepared to do that mm -hmm. um and at the same time and this is this is always a tricky territory there are aspects of our of the dominant culture and particularly culture in many organizations which are come from the middle of our fear mm. they come from our fearing what happens if we or others do something different they come from they do and they come from our wish to control and they come from some of us having power and wishing to control other other people so not so not everything comes from the artist in us and i wonder whether the mm -hmm. as well as the welcome there's some there's some kind of commitment to the artist in us also to be the ones who are able to say no to say 
no, this set of practices that we're up to, this deeply stifles people's capacity to bring something. I won't welcome that because mm. the welcoming that is going to prevent a different kind of welcome. So there's a, because there's something so beautiful and tender in what you're saying, Lizzie, that there's a, there's a, there's a sort of very innocent in a way, spark of creativity and generosity in each of us that might see a new way that something could be brought and, and might bring it. And it's a tender moment to say, I wonder if we could try, I wonder if we could try this. At which point one of the reactions any of us can goes, no, 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 I'm going to shut it down. So if we want to, if we want to welcome the artist, we have to also, it seems to me, it's it's inevitable that we'll find ourselves um, uh, not continuing to welcome in a in a in a sort of naive way that in us which would shut all of that creativity down. So welcome and unwelcome are always they're always connected. A, a, a real yes to make the safety for one thing also involves a no to the unsafety that's made by another thing. Mm. That's the sort of the thing that I'm 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 wrestling with as we're talking about is how how our welcome is made. The ground of welcome is made by a kind of discernment. Yeah, and also you said the word fear as well. I wonder whether there's a way that part of that discernment is where it feels like there's fear. How do we be in relationship with one another where we could say that? Like where we could say, I'm already wondering where this comes from. Can you talk to me about that? I mean, that, that's a way of welcoming something that isn't, um, that we, we might be able to feel isn't supportive of the system or the intentions that we're inside of. And we could say, would you tell me more about the motivation behind this? Would you tell me more about where this comes from so that we can really see because it it might be made I mean you know everything gets immediately complex as I start thinking like this but it might be made from fear but it also might be made from my fear that I can't see what's trying to be brought like th those things both exist like and also depending on the power dynamic between us as well because I might not be a decision maker of what happens here and what doesn't happen here um, I might not have that power, but I, but, but each of us always has the power to inquire and to ask one another questions and say, can you explain that to me, please? And I think, can you explain that to me, please, is a form of welcome. I'm still here. I'm listening. I'm not just saying no. I'm, I'm really open to seeing what you're at this point, at this point, I'm, I've got some, um, some concerns but I'm still welcoming. I'm still seeing what this is. And, and then maybe, maybe something opens up where we could have a conversation about fear rather than be in like a yes or no too quickly. Cause I think that's what's kind of happened over history is that things have been brought at a time when that welcome wasn't present yet, but when they get brought back now, there's welcome. Like, like things have changed so quickly in, in our culture over the years. Like when I think back to what were, you know, I'm, I'm currently in 2022. I'm, I think I am, I'm 41. So it's not that my life has not been very long. Like I'm not, I haven't been here for very long in the course of things. And just being at school, for example, for me and, the people who I know who are now at school, the things that happen there and what people are open to generally and what people are talking about, it's completely different. And I remember talking to my granddad when he was alive. I mean, he couldn't even fathom some of the things that I was going on about when I was 16. Like, it's so quick that what, what we're open to is shifting so rapidly, has been shifting so rapidly. And so it feels like a, a really important thing to say, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know yet, maybe this, and of course there's things that feel really like a big fat no, very, very, 
quickly like anything to do with violence or anything to do with when there's uh, people being spoken about or people you know in, in terrible ways like of, of course there's there's that hard end of it but I feel like there's a there's a way that all of that comes from fear and if we could talk about where those things are generated from like like to become people who have deeper conversations than we're having feels like what's needed and that's a kind of welcome so rather than a just a a welcome doesn't just mean yes a welcome means i'm here and i'm interested and whatever my reactions are whatever my reactivity is i'm willing to stay here with you and wonder and the answer could still be no and that we're not going to do this but at least I've spent enough time saying I'm open and let's talk for something to be worked out. I think that's the kind of, um, that feels to me like an artist, an artist's response to something is to say, I'm here, I'm open, even if I'm triggered, even if I'm reactive, I'm willing to stay and be changed. And I might not be changed, but I'm willing to see if I could be and see where we get to. Yeah, such a excellent, I think, a necessary what you what you just did to deepen what welcome can mean. And it's it's very clarifying, Lizzie, because that kind of welcome that you're expressing allows us to bring us to one another knowing that me bringing you my art uh, doesn't mean that my art has to impose upon you. Mm. Yeah, I might bring my art very genuinely, whatever it is. And if you can welcome, I'm very grateful for your, your way of saying this, if you can welcome in the way which is, um, I'm here, I'm with you, I'm interested. Let's stand together alongside one another. That's a that's a m much more profound welcome than the kind of welcome that might goes, oh I love your art, or I don't like your art, because if art is as uh, Robert Henry says, uh, something that disturbs, upsets and enlightens and opens the way, it can't be at the level of uh, yes thank you or no thank you or yes I like it or no I don't. not as the not as the first but. Um, Oh, let me see what I can, how this changes me by being with you. And it, like you say, it may not, mm. but also I love this. Um, could you teach me about your art, Lizzie? Mm. Your art that's yours and I, I don't understand it yet. And I may or may not want it in my life, but can I stay with you long enough? that we can stay in relationship around it. And whatever happens, whether, whether your art is just something you made right in close or whether it was a bold um, wish to change the world of practices and things and people and relationships around you, um, we get to hang out in it for a while, whatever happens with it. Yeah. And also, Justin, you're just pointing back to Robert Henry's writing as well. As artists, it's important that we remember that we are likely to disturb, upset, and open some ways. And that's not an easy process. Like, it doesn't happen instantly. So we have to be willing to be that way that you were saying with one another because we have to be willing to be upset and disturbed and moved, basically. And to be moved isn't an instant, instantaneous something. It invites a process. We we get into something together because of what you know. If you make something and it and it upsets and disturbs me, used in kind of technical way, like my system is disrupted by what you've brought. That requires me to stay committed to my welcome. And it also requires you as the bringer to stay committed to the disruption oh this is what happens when I bring art look at the disruption look at the upset that could 
that could be what's happening too. It could be that I'm totally off the mark. And that's also okay because that's the spirit of artistry is that it's not, there's, there's no, it's not going to be right or wrong or something. But that when we put ourselves on the line to be reminded, which I am by Robert Henry's writing, that we might be disruptors. Our art might be in some way awakening, like from our sleep, which for some of us is really difficult to be awoken from some things is painful and we all know that we've all known something that shakes us isn't pleasant and it's important and it's needed and it's not nice and I feel like that's a really important reminder for those of us who are creating which is that we might be a source of disturbance and how do we seek support for people who see us and get us and who can hold us through a process that we've made by throwing something into the mix that's disruptive but that's in service of truth or openness or depth or something and how do we learn to be in practices and relationships that enable us to stand in that tenderness of being a disruptor because something else is called for here there's there's a lot of truth telling that the world needs in order to know itself more honestly and sometimes it's really hard to be the person pointing to things that no one else is willing to look at and I think that's the point of so much art is that it does disrupt and throw everything around so that we might know it in a life in a different way but it's quite something to stand in the position of the thrower of the piece and I feel really respectful of that as myself like oh my gosh yes I need to remember that this is what often can happen because that's the nature of being an artist so by taking up the narrative, the identity of an artist, I have to remember that that's part of what is going to happen around me because things will be disrupted. And then it's important that we're all in the kinds of relationships that can support us when we've disrupted something because the system we've disrupted might not be ready to be disrupted and or be able to hear us. And then we have to find support for our own well-being to have been the disruptor. Oh my goodness, such a big conversation. <laughs> well, I think this is probably time for us to, to round off. Justin, I just want to say thank you that this kind of mutual artistry is here and it's alive between us. And thank you to, to Kerry for being this person. And thank you to Kerry for being the kind of person who does disturb and who does disrupt and who is an artist herself and is living by this way. And thank you to everybody who's here and in this with us in this kind of depth and complexity of things. And we're going to be back next week with another source. And thank you, Justin, as ever, for being here and open and right in it with me thank you lizzie thank you everyone see you next week bye, -bye.